Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Rugby BS. Today I bring you my library book haul for this summer. So one of the great things of my university is that we get to check out books for the entirety of summer, so all these books have to go back in March. So I'm happy about that. I'm not sure I'm going to read every single one of these in its entirety because I have lots of like compilations and handbooks so I might be dipping in and out of them but yeah I'm very excited and I'm also very excited for my summer vacations because although I love going to university and I love studying I am just so tired. 2018 was crazy. I mean crazy fun. I did so many amazing things but I'm also very tired, so I need this break. Anyways, I'll get over the more technical stuff just because I don't think you might be that interested in them, but I want to mention them just in case and then we'll move to the more popular literature sort of things. Most of this is nonfiction, I've just realized that. Um, so the first book is Language, Vision and Music, Advances in Consciousness Research, edited by Paul McKevitt, Sean, on your lame, I'm sorry, I just butchered your name, and Con Mulby Hill. So, Irish names right there. Um, this is, uh, yeah, a compilation of papers on um, cognitive research. That is one of the areas I'm looking into, but I'm also very hesitant because I find it incredibly intimidating. So, yeah. Right now, I'm working on cognitive stylistics, so it's kind of related to cognitive linguistics, but it's not that per se, and so I'm just thinking it over. And speaking about cognitive linguistics, I have the Rutleg Critical Concepts in Linguistic, Cognitive Linguistics Volumes 1 and 2. So I just started with these ones, but I'm hoping I will read the whole collection by the end of 2019, because I want to read them all and I'm graduating next year so I won't have access to them anymore. And then finally I have writing your journal article in 12 weeks, a guide to academic publishing success. So I was just awarded a small grant, it's really small but I was very happy about it, um, to write an article to publish. And I'm very excited but I'm also very scared because it's my first I'm also trying to do something a bit different with my paper and not make it as dry as some papers are. So yeah, it's a tall order. We'll see how it goes. Something completely different, the Cambridge Companion to the Fond de Siècle, edited by Gail Marshall. And excuse my French, I don't speak French. Um, this is what it says. It's a compilation of essays, two of which I've already read for a class. Now we move into the sort of denser but still kind of popish books, I think. Um, I have The Dream of Enlightenment, The Rise of Modern Philosophy by Anthony Gottlieb, author of The Dream of Reason, which deals, it's like the prequel of this, and this is basically an explanation of all modern Western philosophy um, from Enlightenment on. I'm very interested in philosophy in general, so I'm always looking to learn more. Then I have on the origin of stories, evolution, cognition, and fiction. And so this sort of blends narratology with cognitive reasons. So basically why we tell stories. I think it's fascinating. It is a big book and it is a tall order. So I expect a lot from that book. Then I have Saint Scholars and Schizophrenics, Mental Illness in Rural Ireland by Nancy Shepard Hughes. I'm very interested in Irish studies and I actually hope to do uh, winter for me slash summer for Ireland um, summer school next year so yeah let's see how it is let's just get out the the fiction book I checked out which is um, the children or the infants by Lina Merwane I don't know if this book is translated to English I know lots of Lina Merwane's books are translated into English but I'm not sure this one is so Lina Merone is a Chilean author and all her stories are supposed to be like very shocking and she's also supposed to be a very feminist author and it's kind of disgraceful that I haven't read anything by her. This is supposed to be like about two little girls that 
run away from their palace. Oh, they are princesses and like they get killed or something. I'm I'm not sure, but I know it's like fairy tale inspired and that's all I really need to know. Then I have the ABC of Opera, everything there is to know by Eckhart von den Hugen. And this is of course a book from a German musician. He's a musicologist. Um and yeah. So this is a Spanish edition actually. I'm really into opera, but I know I wouldn't say that I don't know anything, but I don't know much. And so I'm always eager to learn. Quite big, but I think the print is, uh, it's it's all right. Um, I think the, the thing about books being big is not that I have to read them, is that I have to carry them. Speaking of big books, I have Enlightenment Now, The Case for Reason, Science, Humanism and Progress by Steven Pinker. Steven Pinker is kind of controversial because he's written lots of seminal works in cognitive psychology but he's a generativist, which in linguistics is not such a cool thing to be, uh, to say the least. But they are still very important and fundamental in the development of contemporary linguistic thoughts. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Anyway, this is not about linguistics, because I actually have a book on linguistics by Steven Pinker called The Stuff of Thought, um, and I actually want to read that too. And he also has The Language Instinct, which I don't know if I'll ever read, but it's out there. This is about exactly what it says. Um, so sort of in an era where scientific thought is coming into question and sort of we are coming to terms with accepting that we'll never know everything and that everything is potentially meaningless. Where do we leave knowledge and what do we do with this thirst and capability for knowledge. At least I think that's it. Then I had 50 fascinating themes in neuroscience to understand our brain. So it is by Anil Seth, professor in neuroscience from the Sackler Center of Consciousness Science at the University of Sussex. So it is originally in English and it's basically a very approachable introduction to neuroscience. We're getting there. So then we have three American best collections. I have the best American essays of the century edited by Joyce Carol Oates and Robert Atwood, um, which is exactly what it says. I've read some of this already and I love them. Actually, this is one of the first books I ever checked out from my library at university. I don't know if they are really the, like the best American essays of last century, but they are pretty darn good. I also have um, The Best American Science Writing by Rebecca Sklut and Floyd Sklut and hoping it won't clash with that. I also have The Best American Science and Nature Writing edited by Mary Roach. Now, if you like nonfiction, you know that Mary Roach is like a big nonfiction writer. Okay, I haven't read any Mary Roach apart from the introduction for this, which I already read and really, really loved. So yeah, this is what we have. Both are for 2011. Are all of these from the same editor? I think not, although they kind of look similar, but that could just be, you know, coincidence. This says Hutton Mifflin Company, and this says Mariner, and this says Harper Collins. So yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I hope there's not much overlap, but I'm excited to dip into all these books. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Please comment, have you read or do you want to read any of these books? So let me know down below. Please note spoilers, although I don't think there can be any spoilers for these, um, unless the spoilers, they suck, which I hope they don't. See you next time. I'm going to try and pick this up for the like thumbnail picture, but, it doesn't look good. Anyways, okay, let's, oh no. That's all, and I couldn't, oh, I couldn't pick up, I couldn't pick them all up. Um, there was, there were a couple who were in the bottom. Anyway, oh my God, you can see, you can see the pile of books there. Well, 